Are y'all ready for unit two, lesson seven? <laughs> All right, so let's talk about what we're gonna do today and what you're gonna need. We're gonna need our notebook, lesson book, and a pencil. Um, and we're gonna be on page 58 and 59 of our lesson book. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about the rate of change and the initial value of functions. And I'm also gonna review um, the next couple of days, we're gonna review some sixth and seventh grade skills that um, you might be familiar with. So let's get ready. So let's look at this problem and let's make sense of it. Today was a snow day. Felicia decided to track the snowfall. There were already blank inches of snow on the ground from a previous storm. Felicia measured the storm from today's storm at the end of each hour. She found out that exactly blank inches of snow fell each hour. If it snowed at this rate for blank hours, how much was on the ground at the end of each hour? I'm gonna read it again. And in your notebook, you're going to pause my video and you're going to write down all the words um, that are important. Tell me what the, the problem is about. Tell me what is important. Write as many things down as you possibly can. Okay, I'm going to read it again. Today was a snow day. Felicia decided to track the snowfall. There were already blank inches of snow on the ground from a previous storm. Felicia measured the snow from today's storm at the end of each hour. She found out that exactly blank inches of snow fell each hour. If it snowed at this rate for blank hours, how much snow was on the ground at the end of each hour? Pause my video. Three, two, one. Let's see how many things you could come up with. I came up with a whole bunch, but let's see what you did. Okay, so first of all, today was a snow day. Hmm, nothing really important there, so we can take him out. Felicia decided to track the snowfall. Okay, that's kind of cool, but that's okay too. All right, ooh, look at this sentence. There were already blank inches of snow on the ground from a previous, oh, okay, I'm gonna highlight this one. Okay, yes, that's nice, I like that. Um, we're gonna talk about what that sentence means in a minute too. Okay, so let's look at the next sentence. Felicia measured snow from today's storm at the end of each hour. Okay, at the end of each hour. And look at the next sentence. She found out that exactly blank inches of snow fell each hour. Ooh, that's a good one. If it snowed at this rate for blank hours, let me ask this, this question right here. Did y'all at least write this question down? Because if we miss some of the things, at least let's find out what the problem is about. How much snow was on the ground at the end of each hour? That's really, really important, okay? Each hour is important. So let's talk about this sentence up here. And this is why I want you to have no numbers whatsoever. I need you to be able to look at these sentences and be able to make sense of them without numbers. That way, when I give you numbers, you can actually make sense of it better, okay? What does it mean that there were already blank inches of snow on the ground from a previous storm? What does that mean? Does it mean that like, if I drew a snow picture, here's my clouds and the snow is falling. Does that mean I already have two, in, uh, I already have something inches on the ground before I start monitoring what's going to fall? So think about your image, draw yourself a picture before you actually look at these numbers, okay? I'm trying to train your brain and to make it think differently. That way we're not just pulling out numbers and trying to make sense, so, okay. Um, my yellow spot says she found exactly blank inches fell each hour. Okay, so that says exactly what it's saying, right? Blank inches each hour. And then this blue question is really important. How much snow is on the ground after each hour? Okay. We made sense of the words. Now, let's see what happens um, when we put numbers to it. And let's see how we can solve it. Okay. So, today was a snow day. Felicia decided to track the snowfall. There were already two inches of snow on the ground from a previous storm. Felicia measured the snow from today's storm at the end of each hour. 
she found out that exactly one point five inches of snow fell each hour if it snowed at this rate for five hours how much snow was on the ground at the end of each hour pause your video and i want you to use the information you have now with numbers and i want you to answer the question go three two one okay let's look at some uh people's work and see how close you were okay so one student did this and we're going to look at this student and we're going to say did they do something correctly well let's see um they definitely saw the 1.5 inches each hour and then what is this two inches of snow already on the ground what does that mean well this person added how did that person do? They did good, right? They, they did good so far. So, hey, you added. And we added to the 1.5 for an hour with, hey, I'm not hating it. I'm not hating it. All right, let's see what this person did. Hmm. So this person decided to do what? He added the two, which, okay, cool. I said, I'm not hating it. That's a good thing. That's good. And then we multiplied it by five. Why did they multiply it by five? Let's go back to this words. Oh, at this rate for five hours. Okay, so that's good that they multiplied by five. But did they do it in the right order? Hmm. So we did do five hours at the rate of 1.5. Um, but we added first, didn't we? Okay, let's look at somebody else and see what they did. Let's look at this one. Okay, this one, what'd they do? Well, they, they definitely multiplied by five with our rate of 1.5, um, and we get 7.5. Okay, that's solid. What did we forget about? We forgot about the two inches of snow that are already on the ground, right? Hmm, well, look at this guy. He actually added the two. So if you got 9.5, you kind of got the right answer, but you are just as right as this guy. Do you know why? Let's see if anybody actually answered the question. And if you have more numbers than I have, you might be onto something. Did we answer this? How much snow was on the ground at the end of each hour? Okay. Well, 9.5, was that at the end of each hour or only at the fifth hour? Let's look at this for a moment. Let's take a table, for example. Okay. So I want to show you here, we already have two feet on the ground. Two, I mean, two inches on the ground. Okay. Then, after our first hour, well, we have a rate of 1.5. So that is what's gonna happen at the end of the first hour. So if you notice, our first student, he had one of them right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then guess what, the second hour, what are we gonna do? Oh my goodness, we're gonna add 1.5 again. Guess what we're gonna get? We're gonna get, let's see. Are we gonna get five? Yep, mm-hmm. Okay, let's do another one. We're going to keep going. We're going to add 1.5 again because this is my rate. Yep, we're going to get a 6.5. And then we're going to add it again. And we're going to get a, what are we going to get? 8. And we're going to add it one more time and we're going to get our 9.5. So if you got a 9.5, you got one of the answers, but you didn't answer each one of the hours. So we have to be really, really careful. That's why. It's important that we focus as um, the words without the numbers. So we say, find out exactly um, what we're looking for, okay? So let's pause here for a minute. We're gonna talk about two important words, okay? We're gonna talk about the word rate of change, and we're gonna talk about initial value. So you, are familiar with rate of change. Um, Y'all called it unit rate as well. 
and you also called it the constant of proportionality in seventh grade. And I told you the next couple of days, I'm going to be introducing um, some of your your um, sixth and seventh grade skills to help remind you of, of that. Um, but look at what we have here, okay? My initial value is what we start with. It's what we're going to begin with, what we're going to begin with on our table when x is zero. So here I have x is zero, and there's my two. So the initial value is kind of like your um, initials for your first and last name. If I said, what are your initials? Well, you're going to think of your first and last name and think of the first letter. That's exactly what initial value is. It's what you're starting with. It's the first thing before we have our rate, okay? Our rate of change, that's how our Y is going to move over our X. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So as you notice, as we were going, our rate was 1 point, was 1.5. And so we added 1.5 each time. That was our rate of change. Okay, so this is how um, our graph looks. So we're going to look at a graph, and we're going to talk about the rate of change and initial value with our graph. So in seventh grade, y'all said that y equals kx, where k was your constant of proportionality, and x was your value just like y, okay? X is your input, y is your output. Um, we are going to extend the constant of proportionality and we're adding an initial value. And so because we're adding an initial value, our constant isn't a constant anymore because it won't be proportional. And so we're gonna get into, we're gonna have some fun with that um, later on. So but let's look at our graph. Okay, so remember I said that our x is 0 and our y is 2. That's our initial value. Look at my graph. Okay, so if I plugged in and I asked, look at my, look at my 2. See my initial value? The initial value is on the y-axis. How cool is that, right? So my initial value, before I start graphing, see here's 0 for x. And here's my two. Here's my initial value. My um, so my initial value. I'm going to give it a letter B. Okay, we say it's two. And my I'm not going to call it a K for constant, but I'm going to give it an M. So we're going to write those notes down in just a second. But I want to show you how um, the 1.5 here on my rate of change happens on a graph. So, and the way that I'm going to show you is this way. I want to find my dots where my intersection happens. So I like, I don't, you know, I, I like to, I don't like to guess on the ones that are in the middle. I like to find the ones that are clearly on those intersections, okay? And if you remember when you did constant of proportionality, okay, you had your constant of proportionality was y over x. And y'all said it was y over x because that was your unit rate. Well, it's always y over x when we have anything dealing with rates. y is always over x. So as I'm looking for my rate of change in my snowfall, I'm going to look at my vertical change over my horizontal change. So vertical goes up and down, which is my y. So I'm going to look at my y first. And I'm going to go from a 2 to a 5. That's 1, 2, 3. So, so far my Y, see my Y is right here, is on top. Just like y'all did in 7th grade. It's exactly the same thing. I'm just not starting on 0 because that's what we did for proportions. Okay. And now we're going to go over just like we did in 7th grade. And look how many I'm going over. 2. That's my denominator. So when I have three halves and I simplify that into a decimal, don't I get 1.5? I sure do. That's exactly right. So let's take a couple of notes, shall we? Okay. In your notes, I want you to write y equals m times x plus b. 
And then we're going to add a few things to help us remember what M is and what B is. Now, keep in mind that your Y, he's your output. Okay? He's always going to be Y. That's always going to be your answer. My X, that's my input. It's always going to be what I'm in charge of, my independent variable. That's what I'm in control of. But when we're making equations and we're talking about rate of change and initial value, it's going to be my letter M and my letter B that are going to change the most. Okay, so let's look at some words that are going to help us with this. So my M, something that happens multiple times. What I'm multiplying by, and most importantly right now, is my rate of change. My B, it's what's going to be by itself. It's going to be at the beginning. It's my initial value, okay? It's also when X is zero, I'll have that B is going to help me with my tables, okay? So go ahead and pause my video and get these notes in. Okay, good job taking notes, guys. So let's go ahead and reflect with this question. Dora opened a savings account and deposited $50. When she gets her paycheck each week, Dora will put $25 into the savings account. Describe the initial value and the rate of change for her situation. Pause my video and in your, in your uh, workbook, go ahead and answer this question. Okay, let's see how you did. So if we think about the equation that we just were given, okay, and I want to think of my initial value as being something that I'm starting with. What does she start with? Well, let's see, Dora opened a savings account and she deposited $50. So if I said that my initial value is $50, what does that mean? That means I have $50 in my account before I start putting in more money, right? Exactly. So what is my rate of change? Rate of change, what is it? Why is it $25? Because she does it each week. And we know that if we do anything repetitively, that's my repeated multiplication. Okay, pause my video just for fun. Write me an equation. Can you plug in your initial value and rate of change? Let's see how you did. Did you say y equals 25x plus 50? I hope you did. All right, guys. Well, that's day one. So I will see you later for day two. Okay, bye, guys.